Welcome back to Nook and Cranny Gaming. We are playing Shadowgate. Hello, welcome back to Shadowgate. Thank you for joining me. I am Scrumptious Scott, and as you remember last time, we were trying to mess around with the Dwarven puzzle with the levers and the cogs and things, and it just wasn't really panning out. I'm not really sure what's going on there. So instead, we're going to continue to explore a space that we have not explored yet, which is this door beyond the rickety bridge. I'm going to take a quick look at this chisel, though. A half-buried carved stone appears to be a keystone. I'm not sure what a keystone is, but we'll have to figure that out. Alright, so let's try going across this bridge. Take a hesitant step on the rickety bridge. The bridge sways and creaks alarmingly. You halt in mid-stride and step off the bridge. It definitely doesn't seem safe. Perhaps there is some entity that could help you become lighter than air. That's it. That's it. Remember the spell that we got? Invocan. Invocan. Use it on the bridge. You visualize the glyph in your mind and focus your will. With the pressure builds to an uncomfortable level and you release the spell with a word. The power dissipates as quickly as it appeared. Man, I thought I had that figured. <laughs> so that just leads to uh, the mirror room. Just below the mirror room. Whoa! You strike the metal brazier with a mighty blow with your fist. The metal bowl separates with a clang and falls into the chasm, leaving the metal legs. The legs of the brazier form some kind of iron hook. Huh, now where could we use a hook? So we've got a hook. No rope. Same way, use it like a grappling hook. It's got a nice, you know, uh, an eyelet or whatever right there. Circlet. Eyelet, I believe. Like a needle. Interesting. Interesting. So, let's back out of here. Let's go back to the mirror room. hallway. Oh, I missed. I missed. And go down into the crypt. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to wear this mask. You slip the costume mask over your head. The thing smells terrible and makes it difficult to see. Same effect. I was trying to, maybe the mask would do something when looking into the mirror. Come on. I suppose I can hit this mirror. Oh, whoa! You hit the glass with a click, effective jab. The mirror cracks, revealing metal underneath. Well, before we continue, if anything pops out, I want to be able to see. So I'm going to take off that mask. There we go. Pull the mask off your head and take a breath of fresh air. I can't hit this mirror. I can't hit the other ones either. What did I do to this? A jagged crack mars the reflective surface of this mirror. Metal can be seen behind the broken glass. So we did pick up a spell that has to do with mirror, which I believe, or mirror, uh, metal, which I believe is this entries. Entries. You visualize the glyph in your mind and focus your will. With an uncomfortable level, you release the spell and. Power manifests in a spectacular, spectacular fashion, but does little else. Jagged crack mars the reflective surface of this mirror. Metal can be seen behind the broken glass. Metal. Hmm. Oh, wow. So I use the hammer. You rear back and strike the mirror with the hammer. The glass falls away from the frame, revealing a door behind it. 
You run your fingers across the jagged shards of broken glass. Why'd I do that? You mumble yourself and pull out a splinter. Well, now that the door is revealed, maybe we can use the spell? Because it's not giving us a an option of opening. Nothing resulted from the spell casting. The broken shards of this mirror catch the torchlight, sending a colorful prism about the room. A door waits behind the facade. Broken glass of this mirror catch the torchlight. Do I need to hit it again? Is it still, like, covered partially? No. Okay, well... Lit torch doesn't have any effect on that. I'm trying to put the torch back into this holder. This is very interesting. Alright, uh... Into the archive. Let's see if we have anything that mentions a metal door. Have your dog, three pumpkins, harvest door. Since it's the only means to capture and control the elements, you must hide the silver orb behind the waters of the sewer. Most important, we must coordinate our efforts. Seek my obelisk. Seek the obelisk in the acolyte den below the sewers. I fear the worst is upon us, and I have plans in motion that may yet avert disaster. So I went back down to the sewers. I read a note from Lakmir that said that the obelisk existed beyond, below the sewers. So I decided to come down here and see if I had forgotten anything. And I didn't check these grates last time, and this one was able to open. So let's go check it out. The obelisk! That's what he was talking about. Peering into the darkness, you drop down the muck and crawl through the tight opening. The stone den is damp and smells of... Copes? Copes? and green foliage. As if a mirage, the far side of the cave shimmers and pours and power emanates from a stone obelisk. Well, let's go check it out. What's, what's it say? Stone obelisk is nearly ten hands high, embellished with strange glyphs and three deep notches. It hums with an ancient power that assures you it can be powered by a simple magic invocation. Invocation, you say? How about the spell Invocan? You focus your will on the stone obelisk, and with a whispered word, your spell is unleashed. A strange apparition coalesces from within the obelisk, the ghostly figure of an old man cloaked in a shimmering veil. You have done well, simple soldier. Now, listen if you have ears. Since the shadows grow long, and time fleet. Some forty years past, an evil, the light the world has not beheld, escaped its prison. Talimar, the Black. He of whom I have already spoken. This warlock lord brought forth his dark magics and conjurations and unleashed his foul vassals, desecrating these sacred halls. Talimar has laid waste to the combined power of man. And what of the Circle of Twelve, the great wizards? They are no more. I am the last. Pity me not, boy. We were resolute in our judgment, but erred greatly. Could have been better to put our brother to death, but mercy and folly prevailed. I know not Talimar's full plans, but have discovered enough to fill my heart with fear. And yet, hope remains, and it stands or falters with you. Fair the well. Blackmere the Timeless vanishes, leaving behind a scroll, a glowing orb, and the words, Fare thee well. Congratulations, you have earned the Wizard's Friend achievement. Oh, cool. 
Okay, what do we got here? The scroll itself is quite old and extremely brittle. Well, let's take that. What about this orb? The clear orb has a silver sheen about it. We got a note about a silver orb. It is respectively light and vibrates with a dormant, expectant power. Well, let's definitely take that. So, let's open up a scroll. Gripping it with both hands, you carefully unroll the scroll. You read the words on the scroll aloud. Five to find. Three are one. One gives access to the bladed sun, the silver orb to banish below, the staff of ages to vanquish the foe, joining to the golden thorn, the last to invoke the platinum horn. So we got a little poem here, or a little riddle, a little riddle, that sounds like the things we're going to have to traverse throughout the game. I'm not sure what the five to find are, I'm not sure what any of it is, but the silver orb is to banish him. The staff of ages is to vanquish him. And then a golden horn will summon, or a golden thorn will invoke the platinum horn. Interesting. I think that's all going to come within the game as we go. So I'm not seeing much else out here. And unfortunately, we're going to have to keep continuing our journey through Shadowgate in the next episode of Nook and Cranny Gaming. Thank you so much for joining me again for another episode of Shadowgate. I'm having a ball with this game. I, I, I love the style of it, the art style and the, the play style. It's this, you know, living uh, graphic novel picture book type of thing of an ancient quest of defeating evil. And it's fantastic. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'd really appreciate your feedback. Or if you think I missed anything, or if you have any ideas uh, for the riddles that I've got so far. Uh, next time, we will look at the note that has to do with the silver orb and see what we can do about that. I'll see you next time in Nook and Cranny Gaming. Thanks for watching Nook and Cranny Gaming. Make sure to subscribe for new videos every single day. And remember that your likes and your comments are very much appreciated. And we will see you in the next video.